Feature Friday. The freshest. Uh... What up, people? Welcome to Feature Friday Plus. Today is Sunday, and I just watched my first ever Filipino movie. Yeah, I have seen Filipino series in the past, like a couple of episodes, when we were going to be on Mixed TV. I caught a couple of James Reed series Bruh. with Nadine Lustre. Listen to Didn't me. Didn't understand anything, but yeah. Listen to me. I sobbed, okay? I was sobbing. I don't know whose idea it was to send me a freaking trailer of this movie. Can we watch it? A trailer? Yes, of course. Because I, I haven't can. seen it. But let me, let me explain to you because this is important. This is important. Please do approach this review breakdown with an Ephra's Mind approach. I have never reviewed a movie in my life before. This is my first time. So here we go. But... First things first. No, it's not your first. The it's person not your first. we reviewed the Bollywood movie. Before. Yes, but not by myself. Uh, I watch. I experienced it by myself. I ha- I haven't watched this ever. Yes. Okay. So let me explain to you the situation. Sell it to me. Okay. Somebody. I was talking to some of you over on DM on Instagram. Right. Story time. Story time. And you guys were like, and I was like, oh, I would love to watch a movie. I, I I'm in the mood for watching a movie. What would you recommend? And you guys were like, actually, there's this really great movie that released last year. It has Piolo Pascual. And I was like, ha, I'm sold by that name alone. Say no more. Uh, say no more. So I was like, yes, okay. Uh, and then they sent me the link for Netflix. And I'm like, yeah, I, I'm in it. And I am obviously halfway through my makeup routine. I usually put on a movie. They send you the link for, for Netflix. No, they told that. me, I, yeah, that's how it works. Share a movie, so. Yeah, I think you can. Can you, is there any software that you can watch a movie at the same time? Even yes, if you're there's remotely? a website. It's called Netflix Party. Yes, and you can watch remotely the same movie at the same time. We should together do that. And have a chat. We should do that. You should yes, go in your room. room. I'll go in my room. But what's the point? We live in the same house. Yeah, but I, I sometimes I like some distance. Right? <laughs> Fair enough. No, I'm Three points. I'm uh, joking. <laughs> Okay, uh, so yeah, let me explain. So I was doing my makeup, yeah. which you guys should have told tell, told me, tell me, past tense, present tense, I don't know. You should have warned me that I sh- shouldn't have been wearing makeup whilst watching this movie because by the end of the movie, I had to redo my makeup all over again. I was sobbing in bits, but... It's a sad movie. It... Yes. Because you cry for a lot of reasons. No, no, no. I, at the beginning, all right, I'll just go in order. But first, watch the trailer. Gusto kong ipagsigawang na sa dami ang tao sa mundo. No, where is the... No, well, English, the ta- my Amanda, English. In, in, English. English, English, uh, English trailer. Trailer, English. Subtitles. English subtitles. Dude, I actually could understand a lot more than I thought I would. Really? Yeah. It was really nice. It's a top one. It's a top one. It's this one, right? Okay. Oh. Gusto kong ipagsigawan na sa dami ng tao sa mundo. Yep. Akin ka. Gusto kong mag-aalaga sa'yo. Okay. Who does? <laughs> Wait. <laughs> just keep... Oh, that's mm-hmm. nice. Oh. <laughs> bit, I said a bit dangerous. Don't, don't try that at home. Yes, do not if you lay have a down fire, on a uh, bed with a lighter. That's yeah, so not, not terrible. Maybe. If it's a candle, it blows it and you have third degree burns. Uh, thank you, Ephra. Very wise advice. Please continue. Thanks. I appreciate it. What about my granddaughter? By the way, I got to point out the fact that this man looks not over a day of 25 in the Yolo. whole movie. Okay. Uh, well, okay. Let me watch the trailer, man. Amanda. <laughs> He's not his sister. He's not his sister. They won. Oh my god. The tears are choking up my throat. If ever ba, gusto mo pa rin ba si Kelvin para sa akin? No! This was so unfair! Workout, di ba? Para mag-workout. Ano yun ang mga sarili mo? Hindi ganyan. Dude, the feels! Kaya wala sumay seryoso sa akin actually. Kasi lagi kong kinakonsider yung feelings ng ibang tao. Bro! 
my Amanda. Anyone, si oh, anyone silently sobbing? Okay. That's awesome. That trailer looks really good. Bruh. Okay, that trailer let me looks like, to be fair though, the only problem is... Yes. With that trailer, is mm -hmm. if I watch it, right, yes. if I watch that movie, I'm, yeah, like, it's going to make me feel really sad and really empty inside. Like, I want I want to have... That. <laughs> like, I want, I want that, that in my life. Okay, but let me explain the plot. Mm -hmm. The two of them, Amanda... Who pays attention to IMDb rating it nowadays? I don't know, but it's very popular. It's just like, it's the oh, way it goes. Look at the rating of people. That's what I look. I go down. Okay, yes. Down, down, down. Uh-huh, yes, where? 4.8, mate. Oh, out of five? Yeah. That's actually Acu brilliant. Mental, yeah. Accurate. <laughs> accurate rating. I totally agree. And yeah. in, in IMDb, That's a it six. says, yeah, it says this is a six out of ten. Why? Which I don't know why. Well, but go on. Give me your review. Tell me about it. Okay. Take me through the plot, mate. So the two of them are best friends. They literally grew up together. They have this beautiful relationship with each other, which is really playful, really light, and they genuinely care for each other. Um, the is that whole why he said... Like, you're like, she's like a sister. So. That's right, that's oh, right. Uh, so, um, he's really close to her family. He, you know, like, there, there's this whole situation where they're, like, meant to be together, but never really fulfilled anything. And actually, nothing ever happened between the two of them. They never kissed. They, there was never any physical touch. They, the movie, they, they never kiss. No, no, I know it's actually painful. But in the whole thing, it's like, they, I had never experienced a script that without the lack of romanticism i actually felt like the relationship was real oh awesome it was fantastic and then i went to google to look a little bit more about That's it my amanda based on a true story alessandra de rossi which is the main actress also wrote and produced the film That's awesome. Good enough. which translates because it's freaking wonderful. Okay, so it's a very tender story. Mm -hmm. They're super, they're super best friends, and they grew up together. And he is madly in love with her. And they have a favorite book together called uh, One Hundred and uh, One Hundred and One uh, Letters to My Loved One." It's like a classic. Uh, I don't know what the actual book is, but like, it's it's a love story. Based like a hundred letters of love or something like that. And she was counting the book. And at the end, she was like, there's only 99 love letters. There's not a hundred and one, like the title says. Um, so that becomes like an, like an inner joke between the two. And he was like, why are you reading it? Who counts that? Nobody counts it, right? Over 50 already counts as a hundred and stuff like that. Okay. So their interaction is really pure. And he starts writing all these letters and confessions to her secretly he she never knew about this to, to her to he amanda did. he did so he's falling in love he's always been in love with her oh he has always been in love with her and she kind of played with the whole thing the whole time and they they did have this really intense a pure intimate love relationship thing without ever Pushing boundaries, Do which was very no, no, not physical touch, nothing. It was really, what the really, fuck? it's so, so tender. Crazy. It's kind of strange, <laughs> but they they really understand each other's boundaries, and the whole movie starts because he picks her up when her boyfriend Kelvin, yeah. good old who's Kelvin, a douche, a douchebag, douche. Well, douchebags always get the ghosts. Unfortunately, but in this story. He's like the main antagonist. You only see him once. That's why I became a prick. <laughs> you, you only see him once, right? Throughout the whole movie. But, uh, so, Piola's uh, character, he picks her up. Yeah. He picks her up every every time, basically. He's there to pick up the pieces. Yeah. yeah. Right? Well, he's, he's, so he's, he's got always friend zone, there. Right? He's the friend zone guy. He, basically. And actually, the second time he picks up the pieces... He had already warned her, like, dude, she, he's not right for you. You shouldn't be doing this. Yeah. Um, and then th they were supposed to be getting married. Oh, uh, sure. Kelvin and her. And, and you know, he kind of saw the whole interaction being all wrong. And um, when they do get married, he walks her down the aisle. And oh, that yes. scene oh. right there, he's, she's like, I love you. And thank you so much. I can't believe this is happening and blah, blah, blah. And he's like, you know, holding back tears, and I, and you think as as a bystander, right? He's gonna interrupt. No, no, you think that 
he's happy. He's genuinely happy for her, right? Because as a bystander, you think, yeah, this is this is who you know. But obviously, you're seeing him. You're seeing the whole story play out from his perspective, which I love, by the way. How often do you get a point of view from the guy? Never, 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 ever. So I really, truly appreciate that. So the whole thing. Is being narrated by him and when he goes and leaves her like gives her up at the altar you know he he has this pained expression in his face it's like i like he knows this is gonna end up wrong by the way he had kelvin the the douche had hit her once and she had kept that secret from him and one day she went on ahead and like playfully said it because the whole interaction between the two of them is really jokey Everything's based on jokes and it's lighthearted and ha 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 ha, yeah, that, yeah. laugh through the pain type of thing. Okay. And uh, he was like, what? You, you didn't tell me that before. Where did it come from? Oh my God, that scene totally freaking chattered me. She was like, and he was like, you can't just laugh everything off as a joke. This is serious matter. And she yeah. was like, no, you don't know anything because you come from a nuclear family. Your parents were perfectly in love. I'm sure they had to work through a lot of stuff to make the marriage work and whatever. And he's like, that is a hard limit. It will never win. Do not even yeah. play with that idea. And obviously the first time she breaks up with the guy, She goes through this whole phase where she's like, I'm gonna learn Nina's through the fire <laughs> in the guitar and I'm gonna sing it to his head to in his house. Yeah. I'm gonna sing it to him. So she, like the whole thing, the whole song is Through the Fire by Nina. Nice. Playing through the whole movie. By the way, I felt so freaking happy that I got the reference when I was watching. I was like, <laughs> I got that reference the first time it came through and I was like, through the fire. I was like, yes! What a song, eh? Okay, yeah, so I felt very proud there for a moment. I was like, ooh, 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 wonderful. So, he, he's, the marriage doesn't work out. He dumps her, and obviously Piolo comes back and picks her up. And he's like... That's when the movie begins. No, this is the second time he picks her oh, up. Oh, fuck it. The movie begins <laughs> with the first breakup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's like, you shouldn't do this. Yeah, Maybe it was best, married. and then he they actually end up getting married. Fuck, you know. Just to fast forward through the whole know, thing. Go on, I like this. So they pick, that's when he picks her up again. Yeah, yes. Go on. And she is absolutely freaking broken. He's got a nice car, if that's his car. He's a car dealer. Oh, so nice. he se he sells a lot of really cool cars, and that's like a, a, a thing thing about the, in the whole film. Nice. All the cool cars he, he has, see, all the girls he dates. and So he's like a successful guy with other women. No, with all the women. He with gets, all of them? Yeah, he gets the girls. He, he, right, right. And that's the joke between the two of them, that she tried a really hard to find commitment. And she, and he was kind of like, just you not know, floating from relationship to relationship. And But she he, says... it turns out he's always been truly, dearly in love with his best friend. Amanda. With Amanda. My Amanda. Now, does she die? Okay, wait. He gets run over. She gets run over by, by a really expensive car they sold to someone. Kelvin. <laughs> Insert Kelvin here. But no. Yeah. Uh, no, no, Kelvin no. The c That's no. A quite a strong word though, isn't it? We'll get demonetized if I use that word. You cannot. C-O-C. Now, I stop. No. C-O-N-T. No. A continue. So, yeah. So, it is really cool because the whole idea when she's broken, up to this point, you're halfway through the movie. Okay. So, you have seen her whole... She's like Miss Sunshine super bubbly happy days. happy days she's always joking obviously she comes from a really broken family she was raised by her grandmother oh, no man. siblings no oh. parents so he oh. becomes her family yeah as when they were growing up and his, the, his family takes her in a bit as well and he, he, her family takes him in oh, nice. so he's really close to to her lola and everything about it it's, it's just a really nice lola meaning grandmother yeah granny like, like yeah like yeah grandma, grandmother like like, uh, like nona That's right. Oh, Lola. She actually calls her Nana. Nana, the there you go, Nana. So, um, so it's there. There's a really nice um, interaction there, but th what I love was the fragility of that moment, because you were expecting the jokes, you were expecting the happy Amanda, you were expecting the bubbly situation, and there was nothing left. She was in absolute freaking bits, oh. and they have this place this special place that is by the by the beach and she she always used to joke about like oh 
she dedicated a star to him and he he dedicated one back obviously when they were younger so the whole thing is like oh you we will always be tied together we're in the stars and stuff like that this is important please remember that all right okay mental note there they went to the beach yeah they go to the beach and she completely breaks all of her barriers come down And she's like, I don't want to feel, I don't want to do, I don't want to be anymore. She sounds um, quite nihilistic. Yeah, she was like, absolutely. And she's like, now my my no, my Lola is gone. Your hamster died. The hamster is important. Your hamster died. So the, oh, everything that was important to her. All oh, right, important to her. Basically, everything that was important to her Grandmother that meant something away. was gone. Okay, fine. Her marriage failed. And she felt completely and totally alone. And then he looks in her face and grabs her and he says, You got me. I'm always gonna be here. Right? Anyways, fast forward in the same scene. She's like smash drunk. And she felt she falls in the in the in the shower. Totally smash drunk. And she slips and falls. And um uh, he picks her up and puts her to bed and whatever. And in the next morning, he, she's like, oh, my back really hurts. What the hell happened? Blah, 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 blah. Uh, Every she becomes, girl after in the night, they were like, fucking and, drunk. And it's really funny because she's naked, covered by the, this towel, because she was drunk. Oh, but she left him. And, What's he yeah. going to do, dress her? Can you dress someone who's drunk? And then, she obviously, they s- fell asleep. It's the scene where she's uh, with the lighter, and they're like face to face to each other with the lighter in the bed. She's totally smashed. And... They fell asleep in the same bed and she wakes up and she's like, ah, oh my God, what the hell happened? What did you do? And she's like, oh, my back, you went too hard last night. And I was like, it was really funny. Yeah. That was really great. So the bubbly Amanda comes back and then you see this like, okay, she's building herself back together. She's, you know, putting a bandaid on the wound and he's helping her. And, and then you kind of see a glimpse of their life together. Like you see like, oh my God. There's a possibility for them to be together, like so close, and you're like, oh, and then he's completely given to her in that in that moment. He, he takes her to the doctors, and the doctor is like, you know, X-rays and whatever. We have to take a pregnancy test just for <laughs> for real, just for reasons, safety reasons. We cannot just skip that. And she was like, I haven't been sexually active for three months. Blah 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 blah. Bloody bloody. Blah. Oh, that's tough. And she's pregnant with Kelvin. Kelvin's baby. All right, and that you can, Ephra, that, that broke destroys. him, right, TJ? That this that literally broke him, like. Pfft. Yeah. But you could like the funny thing is like he's such a great friend, like he loves her so much. Of course. That he stood by her side the whole time, like it was. Fuck. You know. Well, that's the death of of him, basically. That's the death of him. Then he goes ahead and finds a girlfriend, somebody he's willing to commit with, to commit to. Damn, right? tough on that girl, man. Tough on the girlfriend of, of TJ, because fuck, she doesn't know that type of baggage she's the guy's holding. And they become really close, the three of them. Obviously, she's going through pregnancy alone. Woo! So the three What of them story. are together, yeah. and like, you know, she's sending him pictures. Amanda sending TJ pictures about... All the, the baby decorations completely out of the picture. He never really? came back. Wow, yeah. what a prick. Yeah. Uh, so, and then obviously TJ's girlfriend, the American girl, she's really nice. She really loves Amanda. So they have this really nice synergy happening. And then obviously it becomes very obvious, you know, that he is starting to prioritize Amanda and the On baby. Top of the girl, and yeah. It's as if it was the father. Basically, so the girl leaves him, oh. <laughs> right? And he tries to hide that from Amanda. Right. Like, where like, is no. she? Ah, oh, she's just she's going back to America. Yeah, she's she, he's trying to hide it, and he's in he's in, he's It's, broken, yeah. bro. Like broken in so many different layers. Because uh, he, you could actually see that he was genuinely trying with this girl. Like she, he was really putting in the work, um, and like you. And even though the the scene compilation is actually quite a fast fo- forward moving movie, but. you actually felt like each moment was true and real, and uh, it kind of you kind of felt intrusive for a second, right? right. So right, 
Well, that's this, how cinematography that that movie seems to have. It's quite like that up close. It's, it's quite, so intimate. It's yeah. so freaking intimate. So it really lets you grow into the feelings. Like you felt everything TJ felt. Nice. And as the movie progresses, yeah. you're hearing him narrate each love letter. Oh, fuck it. Well, so he wrote 101. That's right. That's why it's 101. Okay, so she leaves. The, the, the lady, the American girl, leaves him. And now he's here stuck with his baby, pregnant woman. With the man. Which go on. All right. So Amanda's like, listen, it's okay. We've oh, got each other. Spoiler alert, it's coming. Yeah, by the way, spoilers everywhere. This this came out in July last year. I'm pretty sure everybody has seen it up to this point. And if you haven't, go watch it before you watch me. Okay, point made. Uh, great point made. Well, if you're, someone, you, if you're gonna watch a review this lengthy yeah. in a podcast, right? Yeah. You gotta expect there's gonna be some spoilers. So if you're here, you haven't watched that. That's on you. <laughs> At least I warned you, okay? Yeah. Uh, right, so, um, he, she, she's like, you know, listen, we're all, it's okay, we've got each other, we'll make it work, whatever life throws at us. That's so selfish. That's what I felt, right? The yeah. whole time I was like, this bitch, she <laughs> just literally this playing with this. bitch is on fire. She is playing with this man's heart like there's no tomorrow. Well, also, and she doesn't understand that she loves, that death. he loves her. The depth. I feel that like I've watched his, his movie now. Literally, the depth of his love runs so deep, but he never really told her. I think all the devotion you could see it in every act he did for her, though. And like, she wouldn't be able to read that. But anyway, so go on. So exactly. Saying, we exactly. can figure it out. So she's like, and then they're like laying on the beach in their place again, and she's like, "Oh look, the stars! There we are!" And and then he she points out, and there will be the baby, baby Amanda, or ba- my baby, right? So. So this is the three of us, and it's fine, and we'll be forever together in destiny, blah de blah blah And he's like, yeah. Yes, and it's so right for him in his mind. This is like, this is the family he always Dreamt meant to of, have. Yeah. It, 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 this is what he always wanted. The only commitment of his life was her. So he welcomed the idea of fatherhood the baby everything so op- openly into the whole thing right okay wait because in this moment you know he the whole thing and then you see a freaking fast forward he sees the future he sees them the three of them together him being a father he sees the girl growing up the you know them being a couple like family life the one that he grew up with and he wanted to replicate with Amanda. What is this? Is this a dream? Is this what is No, it? he... Yeah, he kind of like... He but fantasizes. He, fantasizes, okay, okay. he fantasizes about the whole There's thing. There's no like special powers or nothing. No, 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 uh, no. He, the he's whole... just fantasizing as he's in his moment. Okay, go on. Yes. And uh, yeah, and I think she acknowledged it as well. You know, she acknowledged the, the possibility of the three of them being a family. All right. So you're holding on to this like thin veil of hope yeah. that the two of them kind of like came to fruition in a in a unspoken commitment to mm, the two of them, right? Brutal, absolutely brutal. Completely brutal, but the tenderness of that moment, Ephra. Beautiful. Boy, oh, I had never seen unspoken communication to that beautiful extent. Good quality action. There is a lot of that going through throughout the whole movie. Yeah. There's a lot of unspoken communications, like their body language, how they interact with each other without saying anything. It's so pinnacle perfection. That's what you wish every freaking romance movie highlighted. Yeah. Because it's that connection that went beyond the physical. Like Absolutely. their souls were connected. Right. So that comes to the labor and she's about to give birth and she's like, ha ha ha, uh, you're about to be a father. How are you feeling? You know. Oh, I know where this is going. Go on. <laughs> you know what it's Ooh, funny? I know at where that this point, is going. Go at that point, I was already freaking sobbing, bro. I was like, <laughs> type of crying, okay? I guess. After. Actually, but there's no point of guessing after. Go ahead, predict your prediction. Well, no, no, go on, go on. I don't want to, you know, it's quite nice listening to you say this. Go okay, on. so. I think it, I know what it is, though. So she's like. Okay, so she she's like... Yeah, don't tell me if it's correct or not. I right. just said she's going to die giving birth. And then he's going to be stuck with the baby. And that's going to be the only representation of 
Amanda to him. It's gonna be a girl as well. <laughs> the fucking movie is just gonna absolutely stab him in the fucking heart. But go on, proceed. Don't tell me if it's right or wrong. Okay. Use your acting skills. All All right. Right. By the way, the reason why Amanda is actually a really good person to uh, do this type of reviews, even though she doesn't give herself enough credit, is that she genuinely studied acting and, and, and the origin of acting and theatre and uh, all this stuff for a really long fucking time. Um, not just whatever the, the education she had in London was, which was about four years, but genuinely a genuine background. Like, this is genuinely the realm of Waluchita. So, so yeah, yeah, sorry, I'm geeking out. I'm completely freaking geeking out. Yes. The script was beautiful, but we'll come the down to the person who should be doing reviews of movies should have never been me. <laughs> It's just people find me quite funny. And You're by quite people, I mean a few people, not that many. <laughs> You're brilliantly But I think people will actually enjoy your take on this stuff. Well, look how many people enjoy, like, the Bollywood one. Maybe yeah. people will enjoy this as well. All right. So, yes. Uh, she's like, there. there's this thing that the nurse has said to her, like, if you say uh, the whole of the Hail Mary prayer with the Our Father prayer, by the time y you finish... Because. You're you're give, you're already giving birth just to go through the contractions and all endure the pain, and she was like, I don't even want to try that. I don't have the patience. I'm in pain, whatever. And and she and and she was like, I'm gonna sing through the fire, right? I'm through the fire. Sake. There are the whole the, the whole labor scene. So there are the two of them are have singing. To be the Philippines, right? Even yeah, yeah, yeah. Birth, By the way, she has an impromptu karaoke moment. Joke. <laughs> for like ten seconds, and I was like, girl. Like, damn, that's actually she's a good singer. Wonder who the, act, who the actress is. Her name is, uh, uh, what's her name? Alessandra de Rossi. Oh, yeah, she also wrote it. Yeah, you yeah, said yeah, it. Yeah. Said it. Um, okay, freaking cool. Um, anyways, so, yeah, so she's they're singing, singing the together and blah, blah, blah. And then she goes to give birth and he's waiting outside and he's like, Efra, he's elated. He's beyond happy. Like, he's about to fulfill it. His long life dream of being a father with Amanda, having this whole life planned out. He has seen it play out in his head. And then obviously the doctors come and they're like, listen, it goes silent, literally muted. And I'm like, oh my God, what happened to the scene? Beautiful cinematography. Nothing. And I was like, oh, God damn. And then... The letters start playing out. He starts reciting the letters, the, some of the, the letters. letters. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, wait, wait, hold on a second. She died. She, she's dead, right? She, she must be dead. But as the letters keep being recited by him, they play out in his head. I'm like, no, wait a second. Maybe the baby's dead. How, this would actually have to be the hardest challenge for the two of them. Pick up the pieces of losing the baby the baby that literally represented their oh. no their their the beginning of their lives together uh, what does that what in my head it was like what does it represent that's the end of what it could have been that unspoken promise well the miracle of life the miracle that they were hoping for is that what died that no well, that's go on. Sorry, sorry, sorry. But that's what's happening in my head in as I'm head. watching because yes, yes, yes. it, it's so beautifully directed right. that what it is makes the musical you... score like. Great. Uh, most of it is Nina through the fire. <laughs> it's, like, it's like a good ninety percent of the movie. Oh God, uh, yeah. No, no, no. The musicalization is perfect. But we'll so talk about reading it in the letters minute. in your head. You think she's dead, but then you think no, maybe the baby has unfortunately passed away. Go Which on. actually lets you to believe that said the relationship is dead too, Fucked. right? Uh, back to square one. You're back to square freaking one. And then she's dead. And Amanda, the baby, it's a girl. It's called Amanda too. Obviously. Call day. Call uh, it all day. Call me the predictor puppy. Let's go. <laughs> the predictor puppy. By the way, she calls him puppy all the time. Oh, nice. Well, actually, they, they give each normal. other. <laughs> yeah, apparently so. In the Philippines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very but, nice. Another reason to move there. I puppy, love that word. Puppy. Especially when women call me that. Nice. Uh, but it's like a really sweet, endearing term. But they give each other pet names and it's really nice. Pet names? Yeah. What does that mean? Her, uh, Her pets. It, no, it's like, it's like endearing terms to each other. You know how like you call, like in Venezuela... You used to have like oh couples names and stuff like that. That's right, yeah, I remember. <laughs> that. Especially yeah. when you were young, that shit used to be so fucking popular. <laughs> so cringe. Oh, a girl called me Gummy Bear. I used to call her Gummy Gummy Bear female version. Yeah. In English, it wouldn't really work. No, no, no. But yes, yeah. uh, a 
I don't yeah. watch out. People call me all types of shit. Well, they're pet names. Those yeah, are, pet, pet, those names. are pet names. I that's how it's nicknames. translated. No, it's that's nicknames. because it's like, it comes from a place of endearment. Of endearment, yeah, yeah. So they have really cute uh, pet names to each other. It's like Fluffy she, or Fuffy. She calls him Fuffy and he calls her Frenny. So really, really similar cultures, man. No, it's very so fucking, very they, freaking alike. Culture-wise, on how they sell so it in the movie. Venezuela. Very right. Freaking, I, I felt like I was watching. A Venezuelan production. That's amazing. Obviously, obviously on crack. Because yeah, this Venezuela has cinema money. reached a lot, a good level, but I don't think it reached this stuff. stuff. Well, I mean, you like, tell me a Venezuelan Netflix movie. Well, they did Bolivar. That was a great freaking production. Well, tell me two. Tell me five. That's probably a good assessment. Tell me five. I think there are plenty of really good Venezuelan movies, but I don't know if they made it. I don't know if they made it. I mean, in the modern times. I don't know, dude. It's too rough a situation. Though. I don't. I don't. But know. yes, so she's passed away. She's yes. now dead. Yes. Baby is alive. It's a little girl, and it's the name my Amanda is. It's, it's little Amanda. Um, so he's gonna be the father, but and he's reciting the letters. Yes. So he publishes the book. Ah. Call a hundred and one letters to my Amanda. <laughs> but the Amanda he's talking about is the baby. Every single love letter is for the baby. As he's narrating it throughout the whole story. <laughs> Bro, I was sobbing, but like literally weeping. And the fun, the, the crazy thing is, is like at the end of the book, he's like, by the time you're old enough to read this, um, you you will have never heard your mother say that I lo- that she loved you. But let me. Oh. <laughs> 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 but let me tell you that she loved you strongly. <laughs> That's so nice, though. Yeah. Okay, oh, water break. My <laughs> mascara. <laughs> I'm gonna have to do my makeup the third time today. So can I just say this is a, a question? I mean, that sounds really beautiful. Um. You know, you know when she said why, why, why did it? You know, at the beginning she said that why did it call it 101 letters when there's only 99? Mm-hmm. Was that his book? Was no. he a time traveler? No, no, no. So there was a book ah. that they had read. Right, that was 101, but yes. he, they did it fuck because it was only 99. That's so right. So he thought, well, okay, to no, remember. No, she said, she said to him, thought. like, what the hell? That's freaking false marketing. Obviously, all this shit happens, and then in order to remember her, he writes these letters, 101 letters, one but letters. they're not. Well, they don't remember to my Amanda, Amanda, but they're actually directed at his daughter. But even though it's not his daughter, it's his, it's his best friend's daughter. But that's he's the father. Well, he's, he's the father of that baby. <laughs> all right <laughs> listen you know. changed my mind so let's talk now okay so that's the whole plot you know. i cried i wept i struggled to do my eyeliner twice and that was freaking gorgeous nah, look, hey if there's anything like the way you narrated it fuck you know obviously i missed out a lot of the beautiful details because what the hell this is gonna be forever long but the gorgeous part that i love the most was the intimacy in which it was filmed so the whole thing had really nice like uh points of view from above so you were it's like you were experiencing the whole story as he narrated it because obviously this is his point of view this is tj's point of view his, this is his story, which I really, like I said at the beginning, I really love that because not very often you get to see the side of the friend guy. You never, you never really get to see the, the love, the things that ignited the feelings that they did. They, they, everything was just so tender and surreal and it kind of felt, it actually, the beginning scene opens, it's like this whole cosmos realigning. So at the end of the movie, I just I just felt like, yeah, it was something ethereal. It was something untangible, and it didn't need to be physical. Like it went beyond the physical thing. It was so ethereal, and I think throughout the whole script, in the whole direction of the movie, that was a main priority. A main priority. Like it was the main course of the whole story. It was the unspoken communication. It was the tender um, dynamics between the two of them. It was how openly broken the two of them were and you can feel it and it was all, let's laugh it off. Let's rebuild our lives together. Let's 
point out our defects and help each other again. And it was this unending cycle that felt real. It was like a slice of life, as well as understanding there was something magical at play. So, of course, you, you could have predicted uh, the ending. Yes, true. You could have predicted where the story was going to end. Correct. Completely agree with that. And that could have, from a review perspective, that could obviously be a, a, a downside of the, of the whole plot. Because why the hell would you want to know... Why the hell would you stay to the end of the movie when you know when it's going to end? Where it's going to end? But... The beautiful film cinematography behind it, as well as the really nicely fast-paced dynamic of the movie, made you feel like everything was worthwhile. Even though I knew some one of them was going to die, mm. I knew it right off the bat. I was like, this has death <laughs> written all over it. But um, it, it was a really nice twist of emotions. And there was a lot of moments where I felt like, Oh my God, DJ, get a grip. Like, literally, why? Why would you just stick through all of this? Love. Dude, and it became so, ta like, so real. By the time the movie ends, you're like, oh, gosh. It's actually a happy ending. Even though it's not. But you're like, <laughs> I'm not mad at it. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? You feel some type of, like... There's a resolution. He's also let, been let go it's kind of, healed, of right? the shackle of this unfulfilled relationship because at the end of the day, he felt like a burden. By the time this whole thing pans out and he's so troubled and she is like so messed up in her own world. And I don't know, by the time the, the movie comes to an end, you're like, it's like a breath of fresh air he actually gets a resolution and still gets to live out his dream. And it, it was like, <laughs> why am I crying all over again? <laughs> Brilliant. So what I really have to say is Alessandra Di Rossi, she brilliantly scripted that, mm. directed it in the most wonderful way ever. It was like this Rossi glass uh, filters through it. There was nothing raw, but it felt realistic enough. Um, also, obviously, I have to be honest, Piolo just freaking stole it from me. Knocked it out of the park. He knocked it out of the park. I mean, you see these pictures and you're like, this is real love, sir. Like, I love how realistic everything felt in the movie. I don't know what their actual relationship in real life is. Uh, they must be close friends. Right. Uh, or they're just wonderful actors overall. But the whole the whole movie... Oh, this is behind the scenes. Huh? Nice. Nice. And Look at that. Uh, but yeah, this this freaking scene right here. Dude, I was like, she deserves so much better. When is she going to catch a break? Uh. <laughs> and he's there and he's supporting her. Also, he doesn't look a day over 25 in the whole film. Yeah, you said at the beginning, yeah. Bro, he's 45. Yeah, it's good and shape, she's 38. Man. So I don't know what it is in the Philippines. They all look so good the whole good time. Good shape. The, the two of them the are sun. in fantastic I thought the sun is bad for the skin though, isn't it? Lot, yeah, but sun. honestly, the, but he, this is a really beautiful representation of the magic. Oh, I did that thing where you... Well, if you zoom in so much as what? Well. <laughs> yeah, so of the, what happens. of the filtering in the in the film, the whole thing. This is a really good color grading of what you get. So it's really soft and it's grainy and it's it has this like um, international film fest feel to it, uh, but without all the drama and weird plot lines that it takes you five days to really sink into your brain. Right. By the way, I love those films, especially the European ones. Russian films are freaking French <sighs> films are really good. French films too. So yeah, it, it has that feel, cinematographically speaking, but the acting, the tenderness, the the storytelling, gosh, it was just such a beautiful experience. A conclusion, loved it. <laughs> 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 and <laughs> I have to say this, like, 
it's really cool when um music ten out of ten nena nina through the fire it's really cool when like movies do spot this type of absolute raw core emotions there and it's also really interesting as well like that premise that life sorts it out itself mm -hmm. life took hold of these two souls they were intertwining destiny yeah <laughs> and it <laughs> and it chose And it, yeah, it resolved the un un or the unsolved issues mm -hmm. that they were going on while provide yes. while while maintaining their remaining spark of love through yes. through a through a child. Um, I ne I've never seen a movie where the the intimacy is is shown in a in a different way apart from you know kissing scenes or. And that or, was that was the that was the beautiful thing for me that really like viola. sparked. This this whole turmoil in my mind that I was I felt like I understood each character to such depth right. that I understood each motivation behind each each phrase every look every pained longing I felt it all and that's beautiful yeah well But this just, is this yeah. was Baleska's first other names hunk <laughs> oh, come on give me a break papa p pj <laughs> hunk what? Know, where, where does your ego go when people actually a nickname they give you is just hunk bro what the hell well i think that it just it just comes with the package i suppose <laughs> gosh dude yeah, he's in good shape he's in really good shape mm -hmm. and he's like 45 good man good on him um Yeah, man. Like these are the type of movies that make you fucking you sit down and and question shit. You know. Yes, I actually it just it was the the ending kind of let me feel like you know what, let life be life. Right. You know. But then you because you questioned his choices as a character all all throughout this, mm -hmm. but then it turned out all right. So maybe mm -hmm. those were the right choices. I don't know. Maybe he should have left. Maybe he should have found love. Maybe he should have had his own child. You know? Yeah, maybe he should have chased after the American girl. American girl. girl. Yeah. I don't know. The thing is, how the fuck do you build a relationship knowing that this guy's emotional baggage is so much that he doesn't truly love you? Like, what happens when the American girl f would have figured that out? Like, I'm not she your did. true love. Yeah, right. She, she did. It's like, how how do I deal like, with that? How like it must be so strange though. It must be so anger-inducing to know that the person that you're investing so much. Of your life. Well, think about the American girl. Maybe she might have been in love with Inigo. Truly, with uh, <laughs> with, with Inigo, with, with Viola. Every American girl ever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right now, just yeah, he's it killing out. it there. Actually, he's in the, killing it in um, the U.S. I think he's in Texas. Where the fuck is he? Uh, oh, in L.A. Maybe. I think he's in L.A. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Acting. I think I think it's the th just it reminds yeah. me of Tom Holland. <laughs> he's the Filipino he, Tom Holland. He could be. He could be Spider Man. <laughs> He does have a Spider-Man energy. Um, yeah, you know what? Don't make Miles Morales uh, Latino. <laughs> make him Filipino, dude. <laughs> Basically the same thing. <laughs> so you'll be fine. Uh, yeah. So uh, imagine you're investing this whole. You move into his house. You're like literally being with him, uh, and then you start to notice that he's prioritizing a pregnant girl over you. That you have. That he Doesn't has. Doesn't that make sense, though? It doesn't though, because imagine Ephra. She's your friend for life, and now she's pregnant. I gotta protect her. Yeah, but she, he was prioritizing her, and this she, baby. She has a baby. And so, but she has a baby. But you start from the girlfriend perspective. You start falling into the background. Yeah, yeah, I understand. You know, oh, you like, definitely fall in the background. That's you're for like, sure. okay, but wait a second. I am here. But that's a fair trade if you know that you're the love of his life, and he's simply what a man that I have fallen in love with that he's willing. But to... But you know deep down that this is not just it. Yeah, that's not enough. You friends. know that he looks at her with eyes of wonderment, stars lit up in his freaking pupils when he looks at his Amanda. Yeah, okay, fair enough. I also want to say this, right? People have been saying these fucking messages all the time and in the comments lately. I don't know why. Like, what? They, they, I don't know. They're making guesses about stuff. Like, uh, they say, oh, Bali's really happy lately. <laughs> because, Bali, the amount of messages that I've been getting, she must be in a relationship. And then, and then, <laughs> this is the funny thing as well. Wow, my friend looks a bit down lately. I, I hope everything's all right. Maybe he broke up. <laughs> with his girlfriend yeah it's somebody like, said oh Valeska's really radiant this past few days <laughs> bro I got a new book <laughs> <laughs> I, got, I got a new fictional boyfriend <laughs> another dark morally incorrect man 
it. <laughs> okay, yes, so that's why right. you're doing just fine. And, uh, but thank you, I appreciate the love. <laughs> yeah, and I'm not down. I'm just as before. I still do what I do, and that's it. <laughs> Are you okay? Yeah, Should more, we talk about no, this more later? Fun. More than fun. I don't know what the fuck, but I've been getting so many messages of those. What you see about me that's down lately? No, it's because you've been giving really analytic love, <laughs> <laughs> love advice out there. But to be completely honest, guys, this is actually like normal effort. Right? Yeah, be like that. I never show that side though. Like it's funny. Like I'm not that kiddie. Hey, really no, really really. harmless fun. I'm like that with Walucha, and you guys get to see that side. Yeah. You know, but I'm fun. I'm actually way more. Annihilistic. <laughs> no, I'm not annihilistic. Probably Duh. closer to a prick, which is a shame. You know? If that's not a nice, say, a nice thing to say about this. Maybe we should change the personal language. Okay. You know well, how we refer to ourselves? An asshole. <laughs> Douche. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not, I'm not an asshole. Nice. Yeah, I'm nice. You, quite he nice. Is, he is. Yeah, I'm quite nice. But yeah, I'm not like this, though, all the time. <laughs> Fucking no way. <laughs> Absolutely. Ask my mates. No, for, or ask anyone that knows me. Well, Valley just likes that. I think I found my new screensaver. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's the review. And uh, that's Baleska's first Filipino movie. How okay, awesome is that? if you have seen it, obviously you have, because otherwise you wouldn't have stayed this long. Let me know there in the comment section below what you think, your whole ideas, your whole perspectives, what were your opinions, how was it received in the Philippines? Because obviously being in London, hard to tell. Hard to tell what people thought about it. So I have you. Tell me. Help me. Help me help myself. Yeah. Well, <laughs> goodbye, guys. Goodbye. See you later. <laughs>